for closed session meetings. So now please join us if you're able and standing for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Dana. All in favor of approving the agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The motion to approve the agenda passes. So do we have high school leadership represented? Mrs. We Hogan. We have Mrs. Hogan. Yes. We're going to do something exciting tonight here. Very exciting night tonight. So I'm gonna go through our fourth quarter leadership um, committees and kind of update you on what the leadership class is working on at Lake Orion High School. And then I have some very exciting introductions this evening that I'm looking forward to. So if I can get the next slide, I'll start there. Oh, I get it, thanks. All right, so. Um, <laughs> Our fourth quarter leadership class just started on Monday. Um, we are kicking off a new quarter with only sophomores and juniors in our class right now. So we're really looking forward to a great building process for the next school year. So we're going to start off with our 10 committees this quarter, our LO Lotto, which is our theme day every Friday, our advertising committee, our <coughs> girls night out event, which will be in mid-May. It's our third through fifth grade girls event um, where we invite girls across the district to come into LOHS and we do kind of a female empowering um, day with all kinds of fun activities for the third through the fifth graders. We have our two major events this quarter, Prom and Prom Wars. Um, I'll get to Prom in a minute, but Prom Wars is a survivor-like competition where um, couples can compete for free prom tickets. Um, and we have several challenges and events and activities that they do um, in the evening to win prom tickets, which is a very, um, fun event and it's gotten to be pretty competitive. Uh, we have a video game tournament coming up that our committee is going to put together. The neat thing about our video game tournaments is it really caters to an audience of kids at Lake Orion High School that um, need something in our building or looking for something different that um, it's not athletics and it's not the arts, it's just something completely different. So we really have a neat crowd that comes to those events. Our low zone committee this year is going to be um, supporting one of all of our spring sporting events. So the low zone will travel to um, girls soccer, girls tennis, boys and girls lacrosse. We're even gonna get out to a golf uh, match and root on our athletes and then we're trying to get a following of kids um, to kind of attend those events and then we're even going to show up at the musical to try to support our musicians um, this year so it's more of like a school spirit traveling um, brigade <laughs> we have a senior breakfast for our class of 2019 graduates coming up on May 22nd in the morning they'll be in the building um, and we're going to try something new this year with our yearbook distribution at the same time so that our staff and seniors can all kind of have um, a breakfast together in the morning so that the senior class can kind of say goodbye to their favorite teachers, get a chance to sign your books that morning, um, uh, and then right after that we piggyback on our academic awards in the building that morning. Um, in the evening, we will have our senior mock awards. We call it NATO, Night at the Oscars, not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. <laughs> and um, that'll be a, a fun night of our senior mock awards. And then we'll have an intramural tournament this year. We just got new sand at Lake Orion High School in the back lot on our volleyball court. Nice. So we're gonna switch from indoor activities to outdoor activities. So we're very much looking forward to those 10 committees um, wrapping up our school year at LOHS. Um, our most exciting event this quarter is prom. Um, we are going to be having prom. Our theme this year, super exciting, fire and ice. So we have um, our venue obviously is already set. This will be our fifth year at the Plaza Grande over on 25 in Van Dyke. Our prom will be on Friday night, June the 7th from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. And we would love to see any of you there if you choose to attend. It's a very nice event. It's actually an excellent event. And we have a really, really wonderful group of kids decorating and putting that together and um, putting on the prom for our junior and senior class that awesome. evening. Yep. So we're really looking forward to, that's a, a new, leak, new theme for us. We haven't done a, a fire and ice theme this year, so, or ever before actually, so we're really excited about that. So my big introductions tonight though, and I'm very excited to share with you our new group of elected officers. We have five students who've been elected to the leadership e-board. And yesterday they spent the entire day at Oakland schools um, during OAA training. 
So we met with executive board officers from all the other schools in Oakland County to learn what our role is as executive board leaders um, in our classes and clubs back at all the different schools throughout Oakland County. So Blake Tartoni is gonna be our vice president. He's not here with us tonight. He actually is at a golf match. But the rest of the kids, I'm gonna have them come on up so I can introduce them. Uh, Stephen Martin is going to be our treasurer. Um, Stephen's going to be working with all of our finances in the leadership class. He'll be in charge of all the money that comes in for sellout for soldiers next year and our charity week. So Stephen's going to be dealing with um, prom right now. And then he'll be dealing with all of our money. Um, after Stephen, we have Olivia. Olivia is our community public relations liaison. She'll be dealing with all of our visits to the elementary schools and our PTO babysitting and all of our extravaganza events at the elementary schools and anything that our um, middle and elementary levels need, Olivia will be the coordinator to deal with our PTO um, families coordinating with high school helpers at the high school. And then Ava Ulianelli is our secretary. Ava is gonna be in charge of all of our minutes and all of our meetings and all of our paperwork and she'll be in charge of um, structuring the class on a daily basis with me to kind of get the leadership class where it needs to be. And our final um, person who's actually gonna come up and address you all is the newly elected class president for the 2019-20 school year and that's Miss Kate Barker. And I'm gonna let Kate come up and say a word. Hello, nice to meet you all. Um, my team and I are so excited for this upcoming year. Um, we had we got to talk to Mrs. Janopoulos today in class, which was super educational for our class. And we're already working so great as a team. So um, we're thrilled to see what this year brings. And thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Does anybody got questions for them? Welcome. We're excited to see Welcome. you next yes, year. Yes, very exciting. Congratulations on your new positions. We look forward to seeing a lot more of you and hearing more next year and this year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, you get good. Well, they're not staying. I mean, we're just going to tell them they don't have to stay, but I think they already know. They got the memo. Got the memo. Well, next up, it looks like we have some really exciting presentations. And I'll turn this over to Mrs. Mercer. Okay, yes, a couple presentations tonight. First up is uh, Orion Oaks students and staff recently participated in a day of service in which all members of the school community uh, took part in service projects aimed at unifying the school and giving back to others. Uh, activities range from visiting residents at the Senior Center in downtown Lake Orion to cleaning up the exterior of the Orion Center to making bags of supplies for residents at Grace Centers of Hope. Every student and staff member in the school participated in at least one activity that day, celebrating their accomplishments together with a school-wide assembly attended by Jay Towers of 100.3 WNIC and Fox 2 Detroit. And with us this evening, is Principal um, Mr. Drew Tallerton with several members of his uh, staff and students, and he has a little presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having us, and I did. I brought my whole crew with me here tonight. So uh, very Welcome. excited. Yes, they these guys are the true stars of the show here. Um, so we have Emma, who is here with us from, from fourth grade, and her brother. We have Emily Petty, one of our uh, kindergarten teachers. Bill Fromm, our art teacher. Emily Roll, our music teacher. Dan Martin, our third grade teacher. And Bailey. Somebody behind you. Bailey, hi, Bailey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> She can stand on that little. Be Bailey careful. Is, I don't want to bump Bailey is the only person I have met who has cooler chucks than me. She has <laughs> rainbow and unicorn chucks on tonight and requested awesome. that I wear my American flag peace sign. So I let the kids dress me tonight. Peace and love. You awesome. got it. So we are... Um, we are very honored and, and appreciate you taking some time to let us come out tonight. Um, and this, um, what we were able to do a couple weeks ago um, was really the, the brainchild of all of these people here. And... Um, we had decided and talked about as a staff that uh, we wanted to take one day and hopefully we can make this an annual event where we just wanted to show the power of 600 people uh, between our students and staff that we just wanted to come together to give back to our community and just show what kindness uh, can do and what the power of 600 people committed to doing 
really good things um, can can have an impact on our community. And so um, I joked around with these guys, I'm probably gonna get called to the principal's office at some point because I, in the video that on TV made, I didn't realize how many times I told our school we're not doing academics or schoolwork today. So I apologize <laughs> oh, in advance. I have, I have noted that. I, I thought Hall. you would, I'll, I'll be down tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, but tonight, um, we'd like to show just a couple minutes of a video that On TV put together for us. Um, we have uh, our students who would like to say a few words. Um, but I think the, the big thing that's been really important for us when we really got this going is that this was, um, this was not something that we wanted to do with the intention of bringing um, spotlights to ourselves. In fact, it was the polar opposite of we just really wanted to thank our community um, for everything that they do for us and in turn really build upon what is a Dragon community we have believed in as Lake Orion Community Schools. And so uh, we did a number of different service projects that day that ranged from helping Grace Centers of Hope to Project Linus. Uh, we had, I have to give kudos to our local fire department and sheriff's department, mm -hmm. they came out had lunch with us. Uh, Mrs. McQuiston got to meet one of our, our special friends from the, the police department that um, they, and they committed to, they wanted to stay for the full lunch period so that every single student had an opportunity to eat lunch with police officers, firefighters. Um, but again, I cannot sing the praises of these people enough that this was truly, um, I, I got a little, I think they made fun of me a little bit on the final assembly, I got a little choked up, but it was honestly one of the proudest days I have ever been a part of and it's because of, of everyone here. So without further ado, we'll show a couple minutes of this and then I'm gonna turn the, the stage over to our presenters here and then answer any questions you might have. Perfect. A week or two, this idea was born. It was a lot of legwork, um, but we had a really great team. So it was Mr. Martin, um, Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Roll, our music teacher, Mr. Fromm, our art teacher, Drew, and myself. Teacher Dan Martin was motivated to embrace the idea. So when Tallerton asked him to spearhead the connections, he was off and running. Back, I would say around February, Drew came to me and, and he said, Dan, I've got an idea. And I said, I'm all up for whatever idea you have, no matter how sometimes wild it is. <laughs> and he said, I'd like to have a day for the National Day of Service where no student is doing anything academic in the school. I want kids out in the community. I want them doing projects for other people. And immediately that night when my head hit the pillow, I thought, all right, let's go to town. So um, within two or three days, I had uh, kids orchestrated to be able to go to Bald Mountain. Um, we lined up the Lake Orion Nursing Home. We had students going over to the Orion Center. Um, there was also what's called Pro Project Linus, where the students were making blankets for women who just gave birth. Uh, so immediately got super excited about the whole entire project. Spreading out through the community allowed the students to see beyond their own doors and to the impact they could have on others. Well, this is actually, um, we don't need to see any more of my face. Um, Looks like you had a fresh well, haircut a, that day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, you got a new haircut and new hairdo. I got all spruced up yeah. for that day. Um, well, I'd like to invite Bailey first to come up, and we've got, she's going to tell you a little bit about her activity. And so, Bailey, I'll slide the stool over if you want to stand by the mic. All right, there we go. Bailey and I are gonna moderate a little bit here. So the first, I'll ask Bailey some questions and she's got some answers for us. So the first question, Bailey, can you tell us about the activity that you did on our day of service? We made bird feeders to help the birds and we painted rocks to help beautify our school. Awesome, and what was your favorite part of the day? We painted rocks because I could make whatever I want and I could a unicorn on mine. And finally, if we could talk about what does the word kindness mean to you? It means being helped to others, helping by doing the nice things for them and being friendly. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Bailey. Thank you. All right. That's awesome. Thanks, Bailey. All right. And then we'd like to invite Emma up to share some thoughts as well. Um, hi, I'm Emma, and on... The day of service, my class went to the senior home, and we told the seniors jokes, and we played games with them, and we sang songs, and then we um, brought them where they needed to go, like to their rooms and stuff. 
and my favorite thing was probably playing games with them and it made me feel really happy and helpful to be able to be kind to them and the word kindness to me it means giving back to my community to help others and to follow the seven habits specifically sharpen the saw yeah that was pretty much very really good thank you. thank you So, again, thank you so much for letting us come out and, and share this. Um, I believe this will be on Inside the Dragons. Um, so thank you to Mark for, for helping out with that. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Anybody got anything for Drew? Well done. Or the kids? Well Very well done. I just want to say, Drew, I had the privilege of stopping in that afternoon not knowing what I was coming into. And he took the time to walk me around, do a couple things. I spent time. The, the law enforcement friend I made was the police dog who was oh. awesome with the kids. And um, I saw kids painting rocks and I saw all kinds of things going on. But what my takeaway, and I know I told you this before I left, I, it was so moving. The energy in your building amongst the students and the staff was so positive. It was palpable. And it, everybody was on the same page. Everybody, there, was, there were no issues, no incidences. I saw a great deal of team building going on, which was just marvelous to behold. So... Oh. Thank well you. done. Thank you. And it's it truly, I can't say enough that this team and our entire teaching staff, I think any time that you ask a group of educators, especially elementary educators, to completely change their day and trust me that I'm going to put them through eight hours of controlled chaos with 550 kids, um, there there was a lot, of, a lot of trust they put in us, but um, just the work that this group put in and... Um, and I think we've all said in the, the week since that, that we can still feel that vibe of it's just, there's an energy about what we did that day that we're really, really proud of. So And make no mistake, they may not have been studying on the books, but there was a lot of learning going on that day. Yeah. Who made well the done. poster? Is that poster? This is actually Mr. Fromm's work. I love yeah. that. Very oh, nice. Great poster. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much for coming. I just want to say also I had talked to you before when you were plan in the stages of planning this. And um, you said, I know I might make some people upset because I'm going off the curriculum that day. Um, but I'm not upset. I think it's wonderful because there are things that are taught. There's kindness. There's team building. There's giving back to other things that need to be taught with hands-on and doing these type of things. And the whole that you got everyone on board, or at least that's what we're going to say, right? Like, or at least they did eventually throughout the day. I mean, you're right. It was hard work. I mean, it would have been, it may have been easier just to, you know, sit in class that day. You're outside and, and doing all that stuff. So um, thank you for thinking outside the box and doing this. And I hope that there's other buildings in our district that reciprocate oh, this. Well, thank you. Yep. So, thank you all so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank team. You. Appreciate it. Another All right. presentation. And we have another presentation this evening. Um, we have some Scripps seventh grade students that are here to present about the companion book project uh, that they did with Mrs. Moyer and Ms. Lowe. Uh, students created a companion book, a podcast book talk, and a QR code to share the recording. And so they're here this evening to show us their projects. Hi, my name is Brady Hogan. I'm in, I'm in seventh grade at Scripps Middle School. In Ms. Moyer's ELA class, we wrote our own companion books to go along with the novel. Companion books are a guide to help you read the book. Ms. Moyer is going to keep our companion books to help students as they read the books next year. Um, I did a companion book on the novel All American Boys by Jason Reynolds, and I really enjoyed the book. <laughs> Hi, my name is Madeline, and working with Miss Slow, we created podcasts where we recorded ourselves giving a book talk about our books. We learned the elements of a good book talk, wrote a script, practiced a lot, and then recorded ourselves. Once we finished our final recording, we then linked it to a QR code so that anyone could just scan to listen. And I did my companion book on the novel Hush by Jacqueline Woodson. Hi, my name is Sydney, and at the class, we had an opportunity to hear each other's book talks. These QR codes are now on display in our classroom and in the media center. You can take your phone or one of our iPads 
open up the camera and scan our QR codes to hear our book talks. You can also use the iPads to record your own podcast. For example, I recorded the book Stargirl. This book was a good read and kept up with its theme. So we brought along iPads for you to actually listen to their QR codes and to um, record your own podcast if you're interested. So ladies, if you want to pass around your iPads to people who are interested in yours and you can pass out your projects. Here, why don't you give them to the board members? Yes. Pass them down. Thank you very much. Here you oh, awesome. If you just go to the camera, you. you can scan the Here, QR pass code it to the board and it'll members. Uh, send it just Let them have them. Okay. Oh, that's all right. I was going to give them, make sure the board members have them. Then. Do all the board members have them? Oh, well, that's the way they want to be. I'll take one. How do I scan? Yeah, how do we scan the QR? If you just go to the camera app. Yep. Camera. So then we go to video or. Uh, no, this doesn't have video because it's Cobra and Firefox compliant, so it's trying to make it safer by not having their image on there. Where's okay, the so it's just audio. Okay, so I'm at camera photo. Now what do I do? So if you scan it, okay. and then you should get a link at the right top. Back You're going to click right there, and <laughs> okay. it's going to open it up. Oh, okay. This is the link. No, so you're not supposed to take a picture, so oh. hold it over. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, and then wait till it pops up. There it goes. Right here. 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 Right I'm not going to record right now, so I did it again. Okay. It's quite easier for me. <laughs> Go to, like, you can go to the Okay. Click it on the top. Yeah. And then I just, it'll go to that one. Oh, is that the next one? Oh, it's just. Yeah. Then you can go ahead and increase your own if you'd like. If you'd like, you have to do is hit play on that right there. That one's still down the probably overwhelming. Oh, okay. And we're moving on to the second one already. Oh. Do we have the awesome. Ross story there? Yep. Oh, oh, swap me? Do you already read yours? No, I'm not. Right. Right. Swap me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very nice. Thank you. One of my favorite books is. Miss Lowe, and my favorite what? book is Dark Life by Cat Falls. It seems like everything is going to Native science fiction like, story. I think that's awesome, you guys. Dark life by Thanks for sharing it. Did you get the key piece or did you share it? I'm like, 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 I'm
Here You're up. Have, Can you make it news. fun? So uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. Uh, our schools, we had a number of schools that were recognized as Michigan Green School mm. for participating in environmental initiatives. Basically, this was determined by the number of events and opportunities that they had throughout the year. And there were 138 schools that were mentioned in the county. And it was nice that we had a number that were rated at, at that level, and which was really a nice opportunity. Um, today was the signing day. Uh, Marion was there at the high school. This is the third time this year that they've had students sign. They had 10 this morning, and obviously they're going to a variety of schools and variety of sports, and it's really nice, as we always talk about, that Chris Bell, the athletic director, does this for, you know, puts this on, and the parents come, and they really enjoy it. So that was nice. Uh, the day of service, you guys learned about that already. Um, the spring musical is coming up. The availability is, is still, it's May 2nd to the 5th. The tickets are still on sale. You can find links on our website and the high school website. So that's an opportunity for everyone to uh, to go. I went and watched some of the practices. They're really outstanding. And this particular show is unique because what it has is a lot more ensemble numbers, not just uh, last year's musical. I think I was talking to Jonathan Kind, the director, had two full ensemble numbers. And here there's a number of them, so a lot more students are involved, which is nice. Um, one of our mechanics was named the Holly Fireman of the Year, which was really nice. Uh, that happened a couple weeks ago. Um, the choirs, the high school choirs performed very well and they earned an invitation to the Michigan Youth Arts Festival in Western Michigan. So, you know, it, they continue to shine. Uh, Ms. Cardinal, this is an interesting idea. Ms. Cardinal's class at, first grade class at Stadium Drive saw a presentation about animal habitats and how they were endangered and so they wanted to do something, so they came up with this idea, and they went to Mr. Murray, the principal, and they sold ring pops, and they thought they'd make some money, and she thought they'd make, you know, maybe $100 or something. They ended up with 700 and they're still going until May 3rd. So um, we, we produced a video and put it out, and there's a link. We have a link that we can share, and on our, our news element on the website, you can see that there's an opportunity to, for you to donate. Maybe you won't get a ring pop, but those are just for the ones in the <laughs> building, but people outside can donate and contribute to the cause, which is really exciting. The kids were excited about what they've done. Um, at Weber, on Earth Day, they went around and, and cleaned, the first graders went around and cleaned up, and they went in, you know, Weber has those woods, so they went deep into the trails and picked up uh, trash and collected all that, and that was really, they did the same at Walden around the building. The, the sixth graders did that as well. This is more of the signing. These are the specific kids who did the signing today. Um, here's the Spartan Award. Every year we talk about the broadcasting program and how, remember last year they went into the Hall of Fame, and it's really outstanding because they do this every year and they continue to be recognized at such an elite level. And what they did is this year Oakview's program was expand, has expanded, and Mr. Cox is the one leading it there, and what they did, they want and also won some awards for the middle school level. So the broadcasting is growing and the, the television production class is growing as well through the different levels. And the yearbook, which is not on here, um, were also recognized there. They won Spartan Award again and dozens of students were recognized, including four first place awards. Uh, at, the, at that event, uh, Jenna Gaylord was named to the June, one of the top 15 journalists in the state of Michigan. Um, we're at the, uh, for the robotics team is doing well. Uh, they won a judges award. They've won awards throughout the year. Including they remember they won their first competition of the year, and this week is the Worlds. Yes, so is. they're there, and uh, Scripps and the high school are both at the Worlds this week in, uh, in Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, yeah. They're in, it's at Cobo Hall. So if you guys want to get down there and see them, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right. So. Thank you very much. Any well, questions? Lots of good news. Any questions for Mark? All right. Thank you for that. Okay. Appreciate that. Do you have anything for communication yeah, update? Just, just a few things. Um, the Inside Dragon show is going to come out soon, as we mentioned. Um, the other thing is that we had a really interesting connection. There, someone had posted on Facebook. There's a, there's a positive about the Lake Orion chat room. Um, had posted about that there was some yearbooks that they were going to get rid of from the 1950s and some other items. And I kind of contacted them and went to the house and I got this book 
you know, four yearbooks and a bunch of old articles and some, some programs, and they're really cool. And so we're going to try to build out, you know, the historical section of our website and try to digitize a lot of that stuff. So what I'm asking, and I started with some of the board members, is we're going to try to have a representation from every dis from every decade, you know, as far back as we can go, either a yearbook or graduation program or multiple items, and then we'll have, be able to display all that for, you know, through, so people can see our history in one place on our website. That's so, a great uh, idea. I'll volunteer my yearbook. I have to dig it up, but I have it. Yeah. So, okay. Right. That'd Just be great. Take off. What year? <laughs> what, de <laughs> what decade is that, yeah. Steve? Uh, 1980. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Yeah. Come so on, we can then. get one for. <laughs> All the way through. And <laughs> Your books back then. Kind of You'd have a really good one, but I didn't go here. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. are you done? Any questions? <laughs> any other? Any questions for Mark? Do you have things? Well, I was going to ask okay. you to please sure. add um, the the um, Good Morning America thing and the yeah. Uh, the, the Tyler Kruger inside. story continues to grow and it's reaching you know further than we could have imagined and it's it's wonderful because. The idea is that we're so happy about Tyler and being back from the Pine Tree student, as you remember, who had the heart mm -hmm. transplant. Um, I think that people are start, still starting to find it. Go to morningamerica.com, reached out, and they did a short story on it the other day. InsideEdition.com has reached out, and they've done some interviews, and they're going to hopefully post something soon. And idea, this has some legs, and I think that idea is really, it, it gets a wonderful face on our community, because Tyler's a wonderful representative mm -hmm. of you know, great things happening and how he's been embraced by our community. So uh, it's nice that that has further reach. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good update. Thank you. We got anything else? Yep. You good, Marion? Where's that? With the Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. So next up is public participation, but I do not have anybody who signed up. Did you want to speak? Yes. You are allowed to come up. You have five minutes. Please identify yourself. Um, my name is Chris Peace, uh, 1390 Foreland, um, which is in Oxford, but I'm in that little corner that <laughs> somehow gets in Lake Orion School District. Um, first of all, I want to apologize for the lack of decorum. I didn't know uh, about writing anything in beforehand, so having led organizations before, I know how that is. So um, I understand uh, what you're going through there. So. Um, uh, I wanted to ask a, a brief question about uh, when the bond passed. There were some construct. There was some construction that was going to be done. Uh, I believe on some parking lots for some of the schools. One of them being Paint Creek Elementary, which is where my son goes. Um, I, if anyone would care to answer, do you know is is that supposed to be done at some point, like over the summer, or does anyone know anything about that? So, Mr. Peace, I regret to inform you that it is not our practice to have a back and forth during okay. public. You're allowed to comment and sure. inform us, but we don't do a back and forth. Okay. Well, it, it said you could maybe ask questions, but that's okay. You can ask questions. We just won't dialogue okay. with you. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So, um, I just wanted to outline a problem that I think uh, many of us experience uh, in the schools. Um, at least mine at Paint Creek Elementary. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the parking situation that is there and uh, the potential dangers that um, I see uh, in that lot. Um, for drop off, everything's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, the policy is that people are supposed to park their car, go inside, get their child, come back out and put them in their car. Um, we have seen over the course of a couple years people parking in the middle, uh, in the lane for the parking lot, physically getting out of their vehicles and going inside to get children. Um, uh, unfortunately, I have a situation where my son, uh, he's got a congenital heart defect, okay? And uh, he had to be on bottled oxygen for about a year and a half. And we ended up getting a handicap placard for him. And uh, it was something that unfortunately we had to do. Um, we also have members of our family that need handicap placards for paralysis and so forth. And uh, people would routinely park their car behind the handicap spots and get out and walk in to get their child. Well, there was plenty of available parking there. Um, now, in terms of just the, uh, the way that uh, you're supposed to do things, bring it to a teacher, then bring it to a principal, and then to the superintendent, um, I did 
bring it to the principal's attention. Um, I did bring it to the super, either that or the superintendent or the, the principal brought it to the superintendent's attention. I, I can't remember exactly which. Um, but I know that uh, Ms. Janopoulos at one point came out and investigated that matter. And if I'm not mistaken, um, she had to park in a handicap spot. <laughs> and I'm not sure what it is she observed there, but um, it's a pretty well known fact that it's a major problem. Uh, the other issue there is it's also a safety concern. People who are parked on the side of the loop, if people are going through the loop in order to get out of the parking lot, a child can run right in between those cars and get hit. And it's to me, it's not a matter of if, unfortunately, it's a matter of when someone's gonna get hurt. Uh, now, what has been, the response to me has been to bus my child, for me to come in later, basically for me to adapt my behavior to the inconsideration of others, which is not something that I think is right. Uh, I think that's something that uh, an educational institution shouldn't teach is people modifying their behavior to uh, meet the, uh, the issues of others. So, um, you know, possible solutions. I'm hoping to, to get this worked out. I don't know how it goes in the morning at the school, but there seems to be some teachers. I think they're teachers. I don't know. They seem to have badges on. I don't know if they're, if they're teachers or not, but they're out there directing traffic a little bit in the morning. Um, I think the same thing could be done after school. Um, either that or contact the Oakland County Sheriff's Office and have them really put their foot down. Um, because it's an inconsideration for others and also it's unsafe. Uh, especially those people who are unfortunately disabled can't even get to a handicapped spot. So, um, you know, I hope that the bond money is going towards uh, renovations of the parking lot and that will solve the issue. But in the meantime, you have a real safety concern on your hands. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention and hope that you guys can do something about it at some point. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you. Mr. Peace, could I have you, um, I took the liberty to put your name on it. Would you complete the sign in since we missed you? Yes, please. You may approach the bench. Approach approach that and fill that out. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's spoke very well. Tell my wife that. She's like, <laughs> same issue we all We'll call her. Yeah, no, if you could do that. <laughs> it's not like drainery books. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Call my wife. All right. Is this, is this broadcasted on television or on the internet? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I can give her the link and she knows what happened. Yes, right, you can. Thank you. So that brings us to strategic areas of discussion. We have governance and the first up is of course the superintendent's update. Well, I wanted to, um, a couple things. One is I had great intentions to notify our community about, I had great intentions to notify our families as to when the last day of school would be. Mm -hmm. In fact, I even worked with Mark and we had prepared the communication. And then the legislature the changed that. It, <laughs> it passed through the House, no, passed, but not the Senate right. yet, um, is legislation that will um, forgive the two days that the governor has ex had called for emergency. Uh, and so, that is kind of in the offing at this point. So it has not passed the Senate. That will have, if it does pass, it will have an impact on when our last day of school would be. So the decision that I made was not to inform anyone because it would not be fair to say this is the last day and then in a week or so, tell them something different. So I, we're still telling people uh, we did get the three-day waiver from the state in the two days that, or the six days that we are allowed. So that is um, nine. our nine days out of the 11 that, forget Carpenter for one right. second. Um, so that is nine days. So we are still telling people to plan the week of the 18th and 19th <coughs> will still be at this point makeup days in the event the snow day thing doesn't go through. If it does, we'll call that a bonus. Does that make sense? Okay, I just don't want to send something out to people and then, you know, a week later the legislature or legislators pass this and 
Right. We have to change it again. So please bear with me. Uh, if I did, I know I've told a few parents who contacted me that they would be knowing by the end of last week. So please forgive me. Um, that didn't happen. If that happens, would the half days at the end of the week of June 11th through the 15th they become would be full, full days? days. Okay. The plan is that those two days would be full days. High school exams would be the Monday and Tuesday moved up. I don't suppose we happen to know when the Senate has this on their docket. No, I do not. Of course not. Okay. Probably August. <laughs> um, uh, that's that with legislative, the snow days. Um, I am meeting with all of our PTO officers tomorrow on my meeting that I have with them. And this is the last one of this school year. So I look forward to that. And any one of you are invited, that's at noon here. And um, it's always a lively group. Not only do I share what's going on in the school district, but also they share what's going on in their individual buildings. And I think the advantage for these meetings with the officers is they share with one another great ideas for fundraising and those kinds of things. So that has been very, very successful. So um, we've been very busy, clearly, trying to get things done. We did have our holiday last week. and. Um, so now we're winding down. Lots of ceremonies coming up, and we'll keep you informed. And that's it for today. All right. Any, any questions for Marian? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. That brings us to a policy committee report. The policy committee has not met. We are planning to meet sometime in May. Okay. Thank you, Jake. Board Self-Assessment Committee, we met on Tuesday, April the 16th, and we have homework, which is to read last year's assessment tool for review and discussion at our next meeting, which will be sometime in May. And just like that, we're at student achievement. Assistant Superintendent Update, Heidi. All right. Uh, just, I believe it was yesterday, uh, we kicked off Dragon Staff University. And so um, Mark has been working on uh, getting the link on our website up and running on the staff portal. And so um, we already have a few different opportunities in there uh, for staff to choose from. And there will continue to be several more. Uh, these uh, opportunities right now are things that we are taking advantage of throughout the county. Uh, but we are also uh, in the midst of having a few uh, staff members throughout the district that will be creating a few courses that will be added uh, in the fall. So uh, we are really hoping that this is a benefit to staff and um, really excited about this uh, new Dragon Staff University. So if you can see on there. Well, it's not in here. Yeah, it's on oh. over there. Okay. Um, <laughs> You'll be able to see <laughs> um, that there are several different opportunities. If you click on, you can click on any of those. Yep, like that. And then each one of those there listed as Julie uh, scrolls down is an opportunity um, for staff, like I said, to um, choose to attend. And this is, remember, uh, for staff that are working towards their master's plus 15 and master's plus 30. So again, um, we're we're really proud of this, and um, hopefully it will it will work out. And who knows? Someday I do think that we may have staff from other districts that that really could be interested, and we would for sure offer that to them as well. Um, this is in coordination with um, working with HR as long, as well as CMC. So CMC is our contract maintenance committee. This is where the idea was born and um, teaching and learning and human resources uh, made it happen. So there you'll see there um, that uh, there are the courses. And thank you to Mark for uh, putting the website together. He's the one that, and Carrie Anderson has also been greatly helping. So this has been a true team effort because honestly this was not a little undertaking and uh, it did not take us long to make it happen, so. Yeah, that was, I was gonna mention about that. It seems like we just talked about it, and boom, here you are. Yep. It's impressive. There we go. Okay, and then, thank you, Mark. And then the other thing, uh, I had talked about 
uh, flex scheduling at the high school for students and that we were going to pilot that. We are very close um, to that coming to fruition. In fact, next week, Steve Hawley will be sending out a letter uh, to particular students. Remember, we're only targeting 11th and 12th grade. They have to provide their own transportation and only a few classes at this point in time. This pilot will be um, particularly small as we try this out. Uh, but notification will be going to those um, classes and if um, you know, students and parents need to sign up and then we will be off and running in the fall with that uh, flex schedule. And we're hoping that it will be successful and then we'll continue to expand. Um, we don't Anybody have questions about the flex schedule? Jake? You mentioned we hope it's gonna be successful. Do, you ha do we have measures of success or what, what exactly are we? How are we gonna determine whether this goes farther or whether it stays the same or whether it goes away? Student interest. That's what's, I mean, at the high school, you know, that's what drives our class numbers. That's what drives our, there's no, there's no doubt what the research says. So I already know that, and we know that, I mean, that the later schedule is absolutely um, a benefit to students. It's again, making sure that it works within student schedules. And that's where I think students need to have choice. We do have students that this will not work for for one reason or another. So again, that's why the district has been so adamant that we still have that choice. Many districts, as I said before, just go, you know, everybody's going on the state, the same start time. They're moving back later. And uh, we really want to make sure that students have choice. I really don't anticipate that it will not be successful. I, I think that students, this is something that, I mean, we hear over and over again. The other beauty of this is, is that just because it may not work in a student's schedule, um, let's say they play football in the fall, they may not opt for it in the fall, but they may opt for it in the spring. So again, providing as much flexibility as we possibly can, but yet we also have to manage, we have a very complex high school schedule mm -hmm. with our modified block. So it's, it's balancing all of those things. But this has been something we have talked about for you know, a few years, and so we're really excited. So, so the, I'll say the opportunity is to expand it because it's 11th and 12th grade, obviously the transportation aspect and some, such things, um, is there a vision for how it could be expanded to a broader student population because it is only limited to those who can provide transportation? Yes, there is. Okay. And Heidi, before you move on, I've heard other questions about this. Could you just touch on if this costs the district anything? No, it does not cost the district anything. Essentially, um, teachers, you know, in their contract, um, have to work so many hours a day. And so teachers who would be teaching this flex schedule, just like the students would come in later. So it's just, an hour. I just wanted to hear you have people no, hear you say absol it. <laughs> absolutely nothing. And no ancillary costs for support um, because you'll have students in classrooms. So aspects like school security where during the school day it's locked down, will the school be open in this for lack of a better term, fifth hour, the 2.30 to 4 o'clock period? We have or, or how will the, how will the students those be? Those will be staggered. Okay. So, but again, we have control over all of those schedules. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, but those are good questions, you know, that uh, we have to consider. So if you think of other things that our parents or community members might have, um, I think we would appreciate knowing what those are. Uh, you know, in terms of a measure of success, I think the greatest measure of success is, is uh, what Heidi said, and I just want to be a little bit redundant and say interest. You know, if, if in my guess, is I mirror yours, that we're going to have a lot of kids who are going to want to do this. Quite a few kids are going to want to do this. So the issue regarding transportation is one we have to think about. Um, parents might want, you know, I mean, it could be, Younger right now it's not, but it could be if the parents are willing to drive the students or however they get here, or older siblings, however. So there's lots of flexibility in the flex schedule. Let me put it to you that way. So, are we going to re-examine after a certain amount of time? Like let's say 90% of the kids want to all come late. Is that something that you're going to look at and say, 
Well, maybe we just should have a later for start. For sure. Yeah. Because yeah. then we could offer yeah. them all by right. saying Yeah, for right. sure. If it yeah. happened to go to that kind okay. of percentage, absolutely. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the other thing, we actually had a phonics fair today at Paint Creek. Uh, we had um, teachers from other districts um, really all over the state. Uh, came to Paint Creek to learn about uh, the phonics program that we have implemented. And so um, Carly Riddle and Michelle uh, Russell, two teachers from Paint Creek, were our host uh, classroom teachers. And then we had um, Holly Conrad and Karen Morrow, who provided a group of students um, for this phonics fair. So really exciting day and another uh, way to highlight our district. So thank you to all of the staff and students who participated in that. At your seats this evening, I have provided the latest um, on the proposed Michigan uh, social studies standards. You know, this is something that has been ongoing for several months. Uh, I gave this to you today to let you know that there are several public comment dates. Um, and so this is at least the second round of these. Um, this has been a project that has been uh, being worked on. And frankly, I don't anticipate anything soon. <laughs> but you have the dates. There's a open. lot. Oakland Schools has it coming up next Monday, or this coming Monday. Yes, there's a lot of, let's just say, politicalness um, that keeps going back and forth. So I, I really don't anticipate any movement anytime soon. Okay. Now, from an educational s standpoint, just as an e educator, do you support uh, this type of standard being implemented? Some things I do and some things I don't. Yeah. Okay. I think that's pretty much because I mean, there has been opinion. a lot of politics. That's the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. as the lame duck session went out, there was yes. a lot of fingers in that shouldn't have been in mm -hmm. to be yeah. polite. Okay, and then today was bond meeting day. So just real quickly of the groups that met uh, our early childhood, we um, discussed what defines our program. Um, we were presented with what is called a program uh, packet. So again, looking at some of the things that we are really wanting and seeing how that ties into uh, the budget and to uh, soon the design of the building. Uh, Carpenter also met. Uh, and those groups uh, reviewed concept maps for both outside with the traffic flow and the parking um, bus loop. And uh, as well, they again uh, looked at site maps for the building on the inside of the building. And some of these, you will hear me say the same things after a few meetings, they will be redundant because each time that we talk about the maps, they get refined. And so then the architects bring the maps back and um, again, we nitpick them, move things and so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the fun, the fun part of the work right now. The same thing is happening at Weber. Again, looking at the inside of the building plans and where that expansion will go and then the traffic, uh, the traffic uh, flow and parking lots. Media specialists met for the first time today and that is a group that, uh, as you are aware, in the bond, all of our media centers will be uh, renovated. And so all of the elementary media specialists came together and started talking about to the architects what we are currently doing in our media centers, what would we like to be able to do in our media centers, and then how does that relate to or um, marry to our STEM rooms that we're also implementing. And so um, that was exciting to have them come together for the first time. And so that was, that was our work today. And our next uh, dates for meetings is May 8th. I think that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> you are a busy lady. Thank you for that report. Any questions for Heidi? No good? All right. Curriculum committee report? Um, nothing to report, but we are meeting tomorrow afternoon. Yes, we are. <coughs> and how about a Lamp of Learning Committee report? We have a meeting on May 
16th um, because the scholarship forms are due May 9th. Sorry, there's too many dates for me. So um, we look forward to reading those essays and uh, picking the winners for um, the scholarships. Can't Anything believe else, we're Dana? at that point. No, that's it. I know, it's crazy. It's the end of the year. Good stuff. All right, we're moving right along with Human Resources Assistant Superintendent Update. Rick, you got anything for it? Uh, just a couple of quick things. Before you uh, at your seat is a letter from uh, <coughs> Philip Boone, the Assistant Director of Financial Management at MDE, uh, which is giving <coughs> us the approval for our pre-Labor Day start waiver mm -hmm. request. And once again, I just want to clarify for the public, and I know Meg uh, did a nice article in the paper, but um, I want to make it very clear, this is not anything that is a done deal. Our calendar is negotiated annually with our uh, teachers union. We do have a contract or a, uh, cal a calendar agreed upon for next school year. Um, and we're starting the process for the following school year. And by applying for this waiver, it gives us that option mm -hmm. should we choose to, during the negotiations process, consider a pre-Labor Day start. I don't want anybody to get too excited about it at this point. It just allows us that opportunity to go down that road if we choose to do so. Um, we had a waiver for the past three years, um, which recently expired, at which time we did not use the, the waiver for any of those three years. So that is in front of you. And I know. Is this the old one or something? Yeah, no. It's August. It is dated August 8th. Yeah, and it's got Rick Schneider on it. Wow. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you out, Rick. No, I didn't put it here. I don't know. Yeah. I was just... No, we have the new one. I know, I heard him say it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for, during that very long... What's what that? What date is yours? It's August. August okay. 15, 2018. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, and then secondly, just a quick update. We are in the process of evaluating our staffing needs for next school year and um, you know that's always a, a time of high anxiety do we have enough staff do we not do we have too many or we're going to need to do layoffs those types of things so um, through all of our, our work um, I'm happy to report that we will not be bringing before the board any recommendations for layoffs of any sorts and, and actually through some attrition of retirements and some resignations we'll be doing some hiring again um, so we'll have several positions posted here in the next few days, um, some elementary positions, some high school, even a couple middle schools. Um, I'm also happy to report that we did have some requests for internal transfers, um, and those are always difficult because one, you have to have positions available in which those individuals are requesting a potential transfer. And then secondly, we need to make sure that the, the request is appropriate and it's, and it's a good fit. And, I'm happy to tell you that we announced to three individuals today that uh, their transfer requests were approved. And I will tell you that all three of them were very excited and happy. Uh, I did personal visits with each of them. And so that's always a good thing when you can make somebody's day like that. And uh, so yeah, we're, we're really happy with where we're at, uh, and where we're headed. So in the future, we'll, we will be bringing to you some new hire recommendations in the area of professional staff. That's awesome. I, I think you. it's kind of rare when we, I love that we don't have any layoffs coming out yeah, this year. That's just nothing but absolutely. good news. <laughs> Anybody got any questions for Rick? Well, and I think that's a direct uh, correlation, obviously, to our stabilization of enrollment. Um, I think mm -hmm. that goes right with what we've been predicting and, and, uh, and where we're headed as a district. Um, so it's a good thing. We're actually seeing a couple of the buildings. We're adding some sections at the elementary. Um, it's kind of nice. Nice change, huh? Yes. Very good. Thank you for your report. So we don't have declining enrollment. We do not staff. have declining enrollment <coughs> in my profession. I Thank like you. the term stabilized enrollment. Yes. <laughs> Superintendent Evaluation Committee report. We met on Tuesday, April 16th and continued to <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. But, uh, Continue to discuss and plan processes for the superintendent. And John, finance and operations, you've been quiet all evening. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shh. 
<laughs> that has not gone unnoticed to me. But anyway, um, don't poke the bear. Last week's, or last time. <laughs> in your in your board packet is uh, March's financial update uh, or status report. Uh, a couple of key points from the general fund uh, revenue point of view. We recognize a little over 60% of our budgeted revenue, about 50.2 million on the expenditure side. We've recognized about 66% of our ex budgeted expenditures. It's just uh, just under 55 million. Our uh, cash position as of the end of December, or excuse me, end of um, March, was 4.7 million, which is gonna be the low for the year. March was a three payroll month. And we're on path to what we're expecting, a 7.2 million cash position in the end of June. Um, that's all I got. Any questions on it? I'd be happy to, to feel I, I had a couple questions. One, uh, in the uh, in the summary, uh, technology assisted expenses, C can, can you talk about that a little bit? Was that unbudgeted or was that uh, uh, a timing issue? It's a timing issue. The, that, that entire budget line really consists of a single purchase. So depending upon when you buy it from a prorated point of view, it's you're going to be the case with B also. Yep. Okay. Going to be B in terms of the hosting sites, in terms of those are relating to the fees associated with the software program. Right. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Anyone else? I'm good. John, that was brief. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the update. <laughs> I'm not saying it. <laughs> a true nutshell. I'll say it for you, right? So we have, do we have a finance committee report, Jim? Uh, no finance committee report. However, uh, also on the Oakland schools, mm -hmm. uh, I'm asking that we uh, postpone uh, this item for first reading until our next meeting. And that will permit us to uh, have first and second readings in May and still meet the uh, deadline of June 1st. Uh, I was scheduled to attend that meeting tonight, but due to our closed session issues, uh, I was here, and I, I would like to pull together a brief summary. That being said, uh, on the agenda was uh, two documents, one for support and one for disapproval, and as you may recall, uh, as a board, we've taken the position of abstaining mm -hmm. uh, on approving the uh, uh, Oakland Schools budget, because it's not our budget. Right. and. Uh, uh, we would expect that treatment in return on our own budget. So I would like to bring you a summary next meeting and we can have the first reading that uh, meeting and the second reading the second meeting of the month and uh, we'll get that abstention over to Oakland schools uh, when we complete those two. I think that's a great plan. Okay, thank you. Everyone's good with that, right? Yes. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Facilities liaison report. There might be a report. Wow. Now, it was actually quite a long meeting, so I think we can get it done in about 40 minutes. Because you haven't met in a while. I can give you the, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the DM Burr guys today, as well as John and Wes, and it's always, um, it's a great time. I just, it's a great bunch of people that are, consummate professionals and it's great to talk with them. Um, I kind of just wanted the inside scoop from the DM Burr guys. Um, they have implemented a new inspection software for their um, custodial quality that their supervisors uh, perform. And it's a web-based, it's called Orange QC. Uh, it gives a date stamp, a GPS and a time at each school. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, when I asked, uh, you know, how it's being received, uh, it was that three principals like the new look and that it's um, the report that is put out is very easy to read and, and they can really tell if there's issues or if somebody's trying to goof it. Um, DM Burr's also, <laughs> what's that? Is that a formal assessment goof it? <laughs> Are we formal or are we yeah. just talking here? I mean, yeah. uh, DM Burr, they also have a report uh, that they're gonna do before and after picks and summaries um, over breaks. So, um, you know, like, I don't know if you guys realize how much work happens in the summer, um, but, you know, pictures of the gym floor before and pictures of the gym floor after they put 30 hours of labor into it. Um, I thought that was very, uh, interesting and and also for training purposes for their peeps to say, you know, this is what it can look like once we're all done. So I realize they're a different organization, but I think that 
the way that we've teamed up with them and and um, kept them in the loop and they keep us in the loop, it, it, it's worked very well. Um, and also, uh, one of the big discussions was why uh, we, we were talking about retention and um, w when that was an issue in years past as far as retaining the people and then we voted to actually up it some so the DM Burr folks who were making more money, um, they said that is 100% why they are retaining people. They, they have a very low um, turnover rate and they're also now offering profit sharing after six months, it used to be after a year, and they're also doing uh, sign-on bonuses and referral fees and things like that. So um, I think they're, they're treating their employees the way they should as, as professionals because they're, they are doing a professional job and uh, I think they're doing a great job. John, is that all of it, you think? I think you covered it well. I appreciate that. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> and I think we also determined that this is probably something that we can just do quarterly, especially with the bond, as, sure. if everybody okay. agrees, especially with the bond committees coming up. Um, most of the information that I glean, I will be with those guys once we are on the bond committee. So it may morph into the same mm -hmm. thing, if nobody disagrees with that. Sounds a good idea. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Speaking of bond committee, the bond committee report. There's no report. No report because you haven't met yet. We will meet one day. And then one of these days, like, there will be, be like, well, Dana, report. please be quiet. <laughs> I'll use technical terms like goofy. <laughs> and peeps. You can use that. Well, it brings us to the consent agenda, our action items. So um, the consent agenda is first. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the following consent agenda items. Approve the minutes from the April 10th, 2019 regular meeting. Approve out of state field, out of state overnight field trip requests. The high school band inquires to Orlando, Florida from February 13th to February 18th, 2020. And the high school chamber choir to Kalamazoo, Michigan from May 19th, from May 9th through the 11th of 2019. Thank you, Jake. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Dana. Is there any discussion? Those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The, the motion to approve the consent agenda passes. I'm catching up. May I have a motion to expel a student from Lake Orion High School? I would like to make that motion for a student explosion student A. I would move to expel a Lake Orion High School student for one year, comma, 180 days, comma, for violating the student code of conduct. And I believe it's a roll call. May I have a second, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Scott. May I have a roll call vote to expel a student from Lake Orion High School, please? Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. McCutcheon? Yes. 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 Mr. Draco? Yes. Mr. Yes. The motion to expel a student from Lake Orion High School passes. May I have a motion to expel a learning options student? I move to expel a learning options high school student for the remainder of the 2018-19 school year and through first semester of the 2019-20 school year, January 24th, 2020, for violating the student code of conduct. May I have support? Support. Thank you, Steve. Any discussion? May I please have a roll call vote to expel a student from the Learning Options High School? McCutcheon? Yes. Mr. Wiedemann? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Draco? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. The motion to expel a student from Learning Option High School passes. Recap and next steps. Okay. Just a couple things. Um, for anyone who would like to know uh, what projects are in our bond, as Mr. Snyder has shared on a number of occasions, all of that information is on our website. The entire application, what projects are being done, and so forth. So I encourage anyone who has questions about what is in the bond and what projects are being done to visit our website. We've been very thorough in posting and 
putting things there. So I just wanted to make that announcement. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, also, I just have to tell you that tomorrow, our, um, uh, in a nutshell, John, <laughs> is going to be testifying uh, in front of the K-12 Appropriations Committee. Uh, Ms. Or Senator Rosemary Bayer uh, asked uh, if we had anybody who could go up there tomorrow to Lansing and testify on the budget, that the governor's budget, and what the impact of that will be on our school district. So I nominated John, because I thought he would Do not talk enough. them to death, but I mean, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll get a parking no, ticket on that. I'm limited to five he minutes. Would be the, <laughs> limited to five minutes. He would be perfect to tell them exactly sure. what the impact Absolutely. is on our school district. Absolutely. So I'm excited for John and can't wait to um, uh, what he has to say. And then my final thing is um, today is Administrative Assistant Day. Yes, it is. And um, <laughs> they're, not, they're from the board. We got more stuff. And we have more stuff for you. Yeah. Come on. Yay. Please step forward, Mrs. Olka. Please approach the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of you realize everything Julie does for us, um, between making the board packets um, to planning, learning, Sorry. lamp of learning, and all these things, she if you have, she goes above and beyond. Absolutely. And we just have some tokens of appreciation for you because we appreciate all you do. Thank you, Ms. Olka. Thank you. I didn't finish my remarks. I know, uh, we got to do. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> the board stole your. You know, there's. I don't know what that means, administrative assistant, because you all know that um, working with Julie is uh, just been a godsend for me and for this school district and for you as well. Absolutely. Amen. You know, this is uh, someone I worked with now for eight straight years, and I feel like she is my um, right hand, left hand, and. Uh, confident and everything. It, it's just the way she handles things. She treats people with such courtesy and respect. Uh, she never, ever, well, maybe once, <laughs> 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 mishandled a phone call. <laughs> just once. Uh, one time I pretended I was, I was her. I answered the phone for her and forgot to tell her. But seriously, um, she is just uh, spectacular. And so I just want to recognize you uh, for all that you do for all of us but especially for me, and I'm most appreciative. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't even make her cry. I tried, but it didn't work, so. Oh, I'll make her cry, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, to add to your um, next steps, adding the Oakland budget topics to the Oh, piece, yes. Maybe. Oh, She's my, passing My administrative you, assistant <laughs> has to do that. Yes. Of course, I screwed up and gave you the wrong copy of something. Yes. <laughs> You're yeah, so give me that first card back. Your special <laughs> day. <laughs> we'll take a flower out. <laughs> Fun meeting. All yeah. right. And those are actually my con my my closing comments. Great. Too, okay. So. Very good. Well, John, you got any closing comments for us? And nothing further. Nothing to add. Nothing. Jim, how about you? Good evening. No, I just want to thank um, all the Maureen Oaks folks and the Scripps folks for coming and for leadership. And it was it was a good night. I like when we get to see the kids in person, especially little Bailey was cute. So thank you. <laughs> you stole the show. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Jake? As the new board member, I give special thanks to Julie because she does a great job making it easy, you know, keeping me in line, letting me know this is, these are the things you need to do. But there's another thing I add on top of Mark's good news. So uh, the forensics team is off to States uh, next weekend, but tomorrow night uh, at 6.30 at the Kiva at Lake Orion High School, each of the students, and it's every member of the team, made States, they're gonna uh, do a uh, showcase of their performances. So forensics, if you don't, it's, it's, it's not crime scene. This is the forensics that is competitive public speaking. Wow. So there's two category, two major blocks. There's um, informational, so they'll do sales presentations or informational or broadcasting. And then there are uh, the, the more the performing side where there's poetry, prose. So our students are gonna be performing. So all the members of the community come on out to the high school tomorrow night, 6.30 at the Kiva Thanks, to, to see those students because- uh, on, sorry. 6.30. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, exceptional, exceptional talents. Awesome. That's something that we were made aware of. So otherwise we would have announced that tonight, right, Mark? 
Something. Understood, understood. So someone came to me and brought it and said, hey, can you, can yeah, you bring too. it up? Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you shared. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Steve, you got anything? I do. Uh, I want to repeat what Dana said. Uh, thank Mrs. Ms. Hogan and Mr. Hollis and the, the children, Mr. Tolleton out there. Mr. Tolleton, I also want to wish you a happy Greek Easter. I know you celebrate Greek Easter, and Mr. Janopoulos, happy Greek Easter to you. Kali and uh, have a great week, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Mr. Taylor. I can't stop thinking about the day of service, and I just wonder, with the impact that we had of 600 kids, what would the impact be with 7,000 kids? Mm -hmm. Drew, that one's on you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> on it. That's all I got. That's all I got. Well, John, first of all, thank you for going to Lansing tomorrow. I think that's awesome that you're going to go testify. You are the perfect person. Um, I want to piggyback on something Mark brought forward. There's Next week is a high school musical. I've got my tickets. I hope people will go because it's the... Adams family. It's going to be phenomenal. Got them. Um, got <laughs> yeah, you can get them online. There's a great link um, from our website to get you there. And um, good luck to robotics at Worlds, and and good luck to all our sports teams that are competing and alive and doing well. Thank you so much to everybody who came for presentations. And Laura, you stayed the whole time. That's awesome. And favor. She gets a gold star. And, well, and we got some high school teachers over here. So. Uh, Thank you, and Mr. Talverton, too. So thank you very much for those of you who stuck it out with us. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. This meeting's adjourned. Yeah.